procedure is spelled out. I mean, how is it that you use that Coca-Cola tin? Or I use this coffee cup. Quite a good example because here are a couple of things which, uh, you know, have, have uh, something in common. They have a container in which coke is put and a container in which coffee is put. And both cocoa and coffee and, 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 um, and coke have some caffeine in them and have the effect of, of uh, wakening up a brain to some extent. I mean, no. uh, and it might be quite a good idea to characterize another kind of interaction which is in the same natural language, but is, is used in a different way, and we'll call these Y-type interactions. They also have question type and reply type. Um, furthermore, uh, in order to justify, perhaps, this, we give an example of this, of this matching. We give an example by producing a model, and I'll call it a model because it happens to be observable outside, which is one way in which A, B, and B, and a different way for each one, sorry, let's do one mod A is better, it's a bit clearer notation than that actually, mod B, such that the execution of mod A gives rise to that, and the mod B gives rise to that, which in fact is a redundant feature of the diagram because usually this appears in, in verbal discourse, it does appear uh, uh, as a, an explanation, explanatory reply to a how question. And another type of explanatory reply, since in fact I've already said memories of type cock, is designated, but not very clearly demarcated as Y-type, uh, insofar as it refers to from what is it you construct the thing which is a bundle of procedures which you use to drink Coca-Cola, uh, or use Coca-Cola, and you use to drink coffee, as the case may be. Okay? Now, in this, this picture, the there are a lot of terms which require a specification. Um, the simplest kind of agreement would be an agreement in which such a matching occurs and in which there arises inside of this organization called A, uh, what I will call R primed S primed proc r primed in con r primed proc s primed in con s primed and this is indexed by a it's, it's a personal concept of right? whereas these things will have the nature of public concepts in the language. Uh, and the interaction occurs in a language which has the properties of natural language, even though it may not be verbal. I exemplified yesterday rich languages such as music, mime, uh, and other things as being, in my mind, legitimately languages. Uh, and many, many social gestures and many institutional movements and indeed as the um, tailor I like uh, at McGill um, is um, trying to give an interpretation of reading the, in the hermeneutic sense roughly of, of, of further explicating of, of a reading of some sort. And this explication process forms a cyclic system which has very much the same character as one of these. Now, what I'm looking for is one in which the explication occurs and this transfer occurs, and the simplest one is symmetrical, in which I can also write over here <coughs> P primed 
S prime. I guess I ought to index those too, I'm sorry. Um, and proc a p primed in con a p primed proc b what am I talking about? Yes, q up, do apologize because this guy's got a q up mm. sorry I do apologize, there's a mistake in drawing um, in con uh, b then b there b q primed and insofar as those additional enlargements of the concept are stabilizable within the system without demolishing the previously existing structure or A's ability to derive that also from P and Q, T also from P and Q, or uh, <coughs> T in this case, which is however B's personal concept of T, from R and S. But what they've done is to, is to set up a new procedure, at least one, many more perhaps, in a concept which has the property of being reproducible and undergoing productive operations of a sort peculiar to the individual, however the individual is, is specified. Now, you need that consciousness of, of the fact that A's, uh, P's, P's and Q's uh, are now um, are now recognized by B as being a set of properties common to his own oper common to B's operations and vice versa. Is that part is that is that process of recognition a constituent element of of become of making something harder? Uh, no, not necessarily. I mean I could go no further than saying there was an awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, at most, uh, but I would say in a formal sense of an information transfer. But I'm not using that word in the sense used least officially by Shannon or the or, or the selective information theorists, mm -hmm. nor even by the linguists, nor even by what his name is Luzit and so on, nor even by um, nor even by the so-called semantic information people like Barhillel or the Logon Metron of Gabor Mackay. Uh, I'm using it in the form of fundamental sense, namely the becoming of a synchronicity, which is one way of putting it, between otherwise asynchronous systems mm -hmm. by an act of attention, or uh, apprehending and attending uh, both the participant and the uh, and the, the, the intended intellectual or concrete object, uh, and um, that I would willing to say it's, it's a sense uh, exploited by, by uh, made fairly explicit by Carlet and Petri, but one which has been around some while. Another one, and simply a different way of trading off what I believe are probably equivalent quantities, uh, becoming of dependency between otherwise independent entities. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, this, of course, is why I'm very much in doubt about all these questions of probability, randomness, and so on. Because right. in, in what sort of topological structure does this synchronization occur? Right. And what is the duration of this event? And is it a continuous event or something? Well, taken in in, in Newtonian math, it certainly isn't. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, and even its order is suspect uh, uh, when projected onto a Newtonian map or onto a Monson plate. Uh, on the other hand, it is possible to make sense of it as an event by observing the transfer of these, by observing these interactions, right. uh, which, right. which entail necessarily a transfer of information. <coughs> now, <coughs> like you say, as a transfer of information, uh, frequently, the participants are aware of it. I could go into some of the cases in which they are likely or not likely to be aware. Doesn't say probable or not probable, 
be aware, the like you're not likely to be aware, uh, it's only when the they or some other observer, because things can be inside or outside in this theoretical frame, uh, uh, can look at the interaction and say A has agreed with, or for that matter agreed to disagree with B, over whatever it is that the word consciousness could properly be applied. Otherwise, I would say the potential awareness and would accept uh, reports of such an event, uh, either in the belief that the uh, person observed or whatever was a trained observer, uh, in the sort of Westburn school sense, or in the belief that they were a very additional observer, um, or in the belief that the expression itself indicated uh, something perhaps curious about events. Um, there is, however, a very strong postulate that nobody is aware of nothing. In other words, it's going to be postulate in a moment that this is not only uh, a canonical type of organization, but a minimal type of organization that, that coexist in any brain which is going to have individuality. And the brain being a medium or processor, that coexists in any brain going to have such property of individuality in this sense of closure contains at least a couple of these things mm. that are engaged in internal conversation and maybe have to have millions. It's a population paradigm, if you like. And <coughs> in fact, what is the ev what's the evidence for the speculation about about the brain? Uh, well, there's plenty. Uh, the speculation, if you like, on the one hand, that the brain could act uh, as, as a processor of this sort, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, therefore it is not a computer in the algebraic sense of the word. Um, there is evidence for interactions going on in it, um, so that it appears to be capable to of having many foci at once. Uh, there is physiological evidence, uh, this is, I regret to say, only correlative, that whenever one directs attention or, or becomes aware or um, adopts a goal or aim, uh, there is a coalescence of several portions of the brain which are Anatom not anatomically distinct, functionally distinct, and spatially distributed. Mm -hmm. um, certainly they're distributed in terms of the neural codes involved. Um, there is the evidence of the senses that people talk about psychology as the study of mind uh, uh, and strictly of awareness, uh, <coughs> consciousness being a special case. And this is simply an etymological difference, but it is a big difference in the so far as consciousness with is, is somehow witnessed by others by an exchange of words or an exchange of, of messages, implicit gestures or whatever, and is an indicator of intention and of consciousness, conscious action, to other people than those immediately involved. What kinds of stochastic dependencies exist here, or don't they? Are these simultaneous processes happening under a multitasking environment? Um, the, the term stochastic used without commitment to the type of, of um, probability at all involved in the measure. <laughs> um, the stochastic, insofar as, as, as the bits, would be independent except. This is tautologous, except for the transfer of information. Right. What is uh, this part is tautologous, but not harmfully so, because what it says is that there is a, if there exists a, a thing like a behavior, an image, or description, there exists also a procedure which is being executed, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Also, there's a complementarity principle. 
and um, this is this is a, is, a, is an important uh, an important principle. I mean, you can't have something that behaves without a process that makes it behave. Now, the diagnostic event I'm alluding to as a hard value event would be to somehow detect, uh, usually in between two different people, who in which case would have to have a replica picture made mm -hmm. for them to be call individuals in a strict mm -hmm. way, and something they could attend to, in other words, which they were not attending to. I mean, the whole notion of attention, if you like, is, is, uh, is good evidence of, as far as good evidence, <laughs> is good evidence of the many partedness uh, of head. I mean, a, a convenient fiction for a lot of psychology, and uh, in fact, a, a very useful fiction is to suppose that people do focus their attention upon one thing at once, and there appears to be a certain directionality and, and one mindedness about thought mm -hmm. very often. On other occasions, we are uh, able to report that uh, we weigh up rival hypotheses, we adopt different points of view simultaneously, we create analogies and so forth by so doing, juxtaposing different conceptual organizations which are themselves coherent and, and stable. Of course, stable in what becomes a pressing question, stable in what sort of process. But um, initially, I opted out of this by saying, well, just stable in a rather curious way of uh, an ordinary Newtonian map. And it often happens that this occurs. Um, conversations are characterized by periods, especially in, in, in small group discussion, uh, of the type reported by Steinbrotten, for example, or by many others, together, for example, or, or, or by um, people like Vizier, or many, or well, many, in which um, who studied in Piaget, for that matter, Vygotsky, certainly, which conversations are, uh, which are somehow directed towards a series of ostensible things, as for example a conversation among um, workers in the timber industry in Norway, um, concerned with certain problems which are to do with unions and payment and how they should be treated, may be asked to discuss uh, as a focus for a, a group discussion, <coughs> lasting typically in these cases, like most of my experiments, for several hours. Mm -hmm. Possibly with the aid of feedback prompting from the videotape and recall the videotape together with the videotape image of other points. But it wouldn't actually do it anyhow. Um, periods in which the meanings attached to terms are pretty fully agreed. The terms are debated. Uh, how they should be, how we should deal, say, with a number of medical situations, medical um, contingencies, if a physician or how a lawyer should deal with some tricky case or something of this kind, uh, are pretty well understood. Uh, but their understanding is increased as people share uh, procedures and build up concepts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, other periods are lapses when people talk in still talk, uh, use primarily ethical terms. Um, by all appearances, they're not quite sure what these ethical terms or value <coughs> terms mean. Um, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Whatever else, they neither are mutually agreed. <laughs> Nor mutually understood. Can't you turn those terms into into the Oh yes, you can. Of course you can. Yes, of course you can. Sure. I mean, you could put those into this into the discussion, in which case something else would come up as a, a as a a way of talking because that's the mores of the, the contract you entered into is a group discussion. Mm -hmm. So you carry on talking somehow, but in order to maintain isolation, privacy, uh, a typical ploy or gambit is to engage in discussion about something which you know 
will not be agreed about, and some of them have very different ideas, and we're not going to change their ideas in this particular debate. It's a way of, apparently, of maintaining a certain privacy. And agreements over the topics which are uh, attached to concepts, and topic is simply a word I give to a public concept, really. Um, in which both public and private concepts are shared and built up, mm -hmm. um, are um, those when agreements are taking place, and these tend to be interlaced, intermittent, and ordered in the most peculiar way at all. So although you can sort of project this thing onto a Newtonian map, you can't say, well, that agreement occurred, after which that one occurred, <laughs> and... Um, nor can you say certainly that the process of reaching agreement in that kind of situation is, is one which uh, goes on without interruption in the ordinary sense of dialogue. Uh, the, there is, I think, a very good sense in which the agreement goes on, and many go on, no doubt, simultaneously. Um, but if you try to map the thing, project it onto a line, mm -hmm. Uh, it looks very peculiar, and <coughs> typically, when you look at these tapes, for example, you have to analyze things that occurred an hour and a half ago, uh, and uh, little scraps of those and scraps of things which actually came later, say, than the particular moment you're looking at, and scraps of what is happening now, in order to make sense of it, and see some steps which would count as good verbal evidence for uh, where did you how far did you get last Friday um, in this in describing hard valued events I can't remember how far did we get last Friday I think we might see the same picture as indicated there that is to say various ovals and things but I think in fact uh, some of the detail has been rather more filled in this time uh -huh. The terminology is a little more richly. Was uh, was there a substantial disagreement last last time uh, about about the process uh, by which things become recognized as hard value or negotiated? Uh, possibly a little, because there was a um, little opportunity for it due to the pressure of Newtonian <laughs> and. B, because uh, also there had been a good deal of preliminary chat during previous discussions of earlier experiments, both in, in uh, the laboratory, in the field, and things which are not normally called experiments and were in fact entertainment devices of much more elaborate character uh, involving lots of people in theatres or exhibitions. Um, where I've done a lot of work. It's another profession of mine. And um, so there had been a, a lot of previous chat of the kind of situation from which this sort of thing was engendered. Now, I think reason A is perhaps the primary one, and there wasn't much to do with the Newtonian <laughs> And uh, so th this this may be, I think, uh, Jeffrey, perhaps you, you, you ought to come in here as the most active of all, because you, you, you were here, and... Uh, well, I think you raise an interesting point, is I think for the most part, uh, I'm not quite sure what you're saying, are you objecting to this this as... I'm not, object, I'm not objecting, I'm... Event? I'm well, not objecting at all. Um, just asked, asked whether there was much disagreement. I don't think there was much disagreement, but as you say, uh, the sorts of things that in Gordon's talk yesterday at ARI, uh, the difficulties he encountered in his experiments, I think could be said to be leading to say that certain things that he might have or one might have previously considered hard value were not. So I wanted to strip away certain sorts of things which were being violated there or were being lost or were no longer hard value. That is to say, if the nature of the experiment does not uh, stay the same and it proceeds in a manner that the experimenter is not in control of or can't even track particularly well, 
then you're not doing an interesting experiment if what you're talking about is uh, something hard value. Mm -hmm. you, you now have an interesting toy, uh, perhaps. And so the question, my interpretation of Gordon's anecdotal evidence was that, well, what is hard value? What, to what uh, can I retreat as something that I may make an objective and rigorous and sound theory on? Since I cannot make a sound theory of learning, perhaps, from these experiments, because they, go, because they all go haywire eventually, uh, it's no good to say that you are having a sound theory of learning as long as you don't teach for more than a half an hour. Uh, that's not a sound theory of learning, it's just, uh, that's a, uh, following a transient. So the question, I think, the way I would have understood Gordon's preparation is to say, well, what is the minimal thing that I can assert is hard value? That is to say, something of hard value in the sense that it is possible to construct a theory where this is the object about which the theory is constructed. Well, I'd like to take the question you're raising in a slightly different direction and then put it this yeah. way. Um, given the fact that much of your work has been experimental in nature, uh, if one is trying to come up with hard value in some things, be they data or facts, uh, whatever descriptors one wants to use, how does one construct an experiment a priori uh, that will meet the validation criteria that we've just spent about the past 40 yes. minutes yes. Uh, yes. to do so. Uh, I will, in a moment, indicate measuring equipment, um, which, if you like, is the canonical measuring equipment, uh, and is immune to um, the usual criticisms, which I, I think are, are wrongly, uh, not wrongly intentioned, probably, but wrongly founded that linguistic data is in itself susceptible to ambiguity and so forth, and um, in which um, I, I, I don't think by any means, incidentally, this is the, the optimum method, but it is a way of saying these are hard-valued measurements, and given the choice of an instrument which is going to be, uh, given the requirement to produce an instrument, which is going to be agreed, generally, as a sensible instrument, I thus have to eliminate, for example, uh, features of verbal dialogue, and replace uh, the verbal dialogue by a dialogue which, although it takes place in mechanical <coughs> forms, uh, and can be behaviorally quite unambiguously interpreted, <laughs> is still of a natural linguistic type. Such as? Now, uh, well, such as, and I'll give here, if I may turn the page, and I will, if we can keep a picture of this in our minds, you're going to pour a great deal of tally sheet off. Well, we can at least uh, agree to give yeah, a picture of this yes. in our mind. Um, <laughs> well, we can always turn back, actually. And, um, was done is to take a number of ostensible topics connected by certain relations uh, and fit them into this uh, to a machinery which is literally a box and this is a machine and I want to record on this sheet actually the condition which we're looking for as being the symmetrical case of an agreement though it is entirely okay, possible I, I, I understand the, the symmetry so yeah it's entirely possible we have an asymmetric one but let's just put it down the bottom here con a one t goes into con a two t and con b one t which is not the same thing as this, this produces mm -hmm. t a on execution this produces t b on execution goes into con B 
to T, and I'm assuming that concepts are stable, mm -hmm. and I'm willing to justify that uh, stability criterion, in fact, by expanding this picture. Okay. Uh, essentially, I mean, it's understood in the No, no, no. No, A1 and B1 are not meant to be the same. Let's call it ton AI, is perhaps clear, ton AJ, ton ABK, BL. Uh, I not equal to J, K not equal to L, A not equal to B, uh, T equals anything you like. Right. Now, uh, the, the, this is a machine in the sense that it is mapped, like that computing engine, onto a clock, onto one simplex. And uh, there is a nice characterization by Ashby of a machine, which is, is a computing machine, algebraic computing machine. Namely, that we have some transformation and some inverse or at the most converse transformation and uh, a linear map and a computing machine performs logical transformations and can uh, have its states, which are defined as a usual way, in the form of state states, um, mapped through the transformation and back through the inverse transformation of the operation clock either periodic or infinite. And so it's a thing of that sort is built. If it weren't of that sort, it would be called broken. Okay? Uh, specifically, it consists in a thing which I will show a picture of rather than, than uh, talking about in great detail. The first one is looks like this things like this. And in fact, this is the first cast installation which John Dixon in particular knew very well. He saw it. There's some detail on it. I think there's a whole picture of it somewhere. It should be in this booth. Well, that was the machine. And the top piece is uh, an equipment of the top upper part, which is this room-sized display with marker lights on it of one sort or another and labels attached to topics. Mm -hmm. It was a way of answering why questions. Why did you make, in other words, from what other topics did you construct? This is a modeling facility and a demonstration facility. Sorry, this one down here probably is a modeling demonstration facility. Uh, laboratory, essentially, mm -hmm. capable of being plugged up and sensed by a computer in which people could exhibit literally one model, or proceed, which was a working model, incidentally, or with, um, which um, would produce uh, what was agreed to be a image of a picture. So it will avoid a lot of trouble in drawing this diagram if I can just um, regard that rectangular box on the right-hand side as depicting an equipment of that sort, or as later used in schools and stuff <coughs> in such places. Um, <coughs> and institutions of one sort or another. Well, oh, it's another version of it, but it's um, some of the things like that, uh, or that. Point being that <coughs> that kind of thing, <coughs> sort of transportable version, and um, the machine, in other words, contained at least two computers, one for an A and one for a B, called modeling facilities. They, uh, A is comp, B is comp, and What's comp? computer. 
Oh, all right. Uh, they were they were special purpose devices. In fact, the, the modeling facilities were wired up with bits of hardware, but they had the algebraic structure of computers. Uh, the same algebraic structure, at least in that Ashby scenario. Mean, they weren't algebraic in some sense of the word, but they were generally dealing with real life things like the possibility of modeling topics in either fuzzy set theory or, or statistics or probability or something of this kind. Uh, on and on them, it was also possible to demonstrate topics, but I, this would be unnecessary for the pure case. And the top thing contains a set of markers, A. A is markers, but they again had a computer attached to them. B's markers. In this case, it was, uh, for the most part, uh, an online machine attached to an interface. And um, she did is to exteriorize, and here you could have a model which was visible. Both in other words, you could see what these damn things did on execution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you had a, a place holder for independent T A primed, as we called it, T B primed, and whether or not any T primed come into <coughs> them. Words were they what a degree they were talking about from <laughs> correlation or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now, the people, um, A and B, or later on just the participants, uh, without being people, and I'll draw them here, just A and B, so we can put either kind of boundary around your leg. Um, we're caused to interact <coughs> with each other. Mm and vice versa, you can draw all these double arrows when it's unnecessary, like this. Uh, sorry, yeah, by, you, sorry, what is important, right? what is important, oh yes, what is important is that they talk through this thing, they didn't talk to it in any sense of the word, and also they made their models talk to this thing, back to this thing. Okay. To this thing, back to this <coughs> thing. And they didn't talk to each other directly, excepting by pointing at this thing, if any. Now, the paradigm required is this is, of course, the Y type, the how, and this is a comparison of the result of the how, and is satisfied not necessary for an agreement, but is satisfied as long as it is possible to execute whatever model is made in here. So call that mod, mod, okay? Now the equipment required in order to detect this event is that there be a stable configuration in which uh, for each proposal made by A, B can bring some proposal to bear which is different, that B's original proposal brought to bear remains and usually is tested many days afterwards, whereas at the same moment containing and agreeing to the proposal of AF that that event occurs and vice versa for B, the simplest symmetric case, not the simplest case, simplest symmetric case. Mm -hmm. Uh, teaching situations were now elaborated by enclosing, <coughs> making a situation which these are usually enclosed in one box. And there is a device outside of here that provides demos, which we now know, illustrations, are nothing more nor less than the expansions of this thing up here, which is an entailment mesh, mm. and recommends paths in the mesh, though it doesn't ordain what shall happen. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, it's capable of dealing with the so-called unsymmetric case as well, where, in fact, this organization, for example, may be created, de novo, to accommodate 
a concept which hitherto has not existed. Now, is this concept meant as being created interactively? Uh, it is nowadays. It wasn't before, it was fixed before, but you could get through it in a way you liked, <coughs> and it had no top and no bottom. In other words, a uh, typical learning strategy plotted on this kind of thing. Well, there are better ones plotted in here, actually. There are lengthier ones. A learning strategy is a thing like that which is a record of a person with a certain type of learning strategy called, I think, serialist in that case, or holist, whichever one he is. And um, if you turn the pages, you will be able to follow the comprehension of the subject matter. You will see that, um, in fact, the serialist does tend to follow rather an ordered pathway. But um, the holist most certainly doesn't. And that um, when one talks about a learning strategy, I'm talking about a record of that kind of shared concepts. But they happen to be self-shared in this case because the guy is called a student uh, and is taking dem demonstrations as he wishes them, or she wishes them, as the case may be, from um, a bag full of possible demonstrations, is producing explanatory model, which again are, uh, are different from the demonstration, recognizably so, and maybe sensed mechanically, are sensed mechanically. Now, that is the canonical measuring equipment, <coughs> and uh, it's obsessive, like many canonical measuring equipments are. I mean, typical <coughs> cases, instead, from the field work, which was done the same idiom. Oh, that's a better picture of the school stuff, by the way. It's a different thing. There's a steam engine environment, which is a different environment, I think. And um, pictures of learning strategies there are, in a sense, equally rigorous. That's a mesh picture, but it's in the old fashioned notation. And the old fashioned notation is called meshes we call them entailment structures and um, entailment structures are now known to be what are known as a pruning of an entailment mesh and it's a union of several prunings preserving order of the entailment arcs. That and has what constituent features? It has things called topic standing public concepts and each is associated with the model and a description, which is what happens if the model is executed, oh. and um, the, um, the pruning, the pruning has a directionality built in, <coughs> and you take a union of several of these, so it doesn't have unique directionalities. Um, and um, analogies in general don't have mm -hmm. directionalities, or some may do. Um, they needn't do, I think, as far as I can make out. But there is a sense of directionality. Here are some pictures of a similar learning strategy on the matrix of shown, I believe. And, um, and that's what I mean by learning strategies against the learning style. And uh, these are the pictures, incidentally, for which I allude to in my notes. It needs to be distributed, otherwise, they wouldn't understand what the hell is going on in the education group, I don't think. And, um, Also, I guess the equipment pictures. But I guess. So you can see that the uh, um, the with the uh, hard valueness of the understanding is enforced by how the, by the mechanism, as you say, by the manipulation of a model. In these situations, you have um, the manipulation is such that. The uh, success of the manipulation guarantees that, in fact, the process implied by the hard value event has indeed occurred. I think one thing to emphasize here: there is a tendency, and I used to be comfortable of it in my sense, to call this to myself, to call this thing up here, which is simply a bag, really, uh, of, of rules and um, uh, and things to stand. Um, and of explication of these rules in the how sense and of suggestions for adopting one or another approach, perhaps. 
is often called a teacher, is nowhere a teacher, there's nowhere in which talking to anybody. These guys are talking to each other, they happen to be in one brain, called a student. Uh, this thing is a resource, and it is, let's say, a data resource. A uh, data resource um, in regard to explanations here, and descriptions, which are their complement, and a data resource in regard to learning strategies and proposed types of strategies in the uppercase. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be a dynamic resource, but it is not anything more than a resource, and there is absolutely no sense in which that thing is talking to them. Yes, I think that the Gordon has a very good turn of phrase when he says that in this case, A and B are talking through the 